does anybody know where you can find that in the Bible? Well, you guys are Bible scholars. Revelation 4.11, right there under the title says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Let's sing it again now that we know our Bible better. Amen. Page 100. Thou art worthy, thou art worthy, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, glory and honor, glory and honor and power. going to ask the same thing we must be thinking on the same line I thought I'd read you the whole passage and they sung a new song this is a scene in heaven in the future and they sung a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou was slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood and out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and hast made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth saying with a loud voice Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Can God's people say amen right there? I am sure glad we can give him glory now. And we'll certainly do it there too. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for the privilege of gathering your house for the purpose that we have every time we gather. And that's to give you glory and honor and power and praise. And Lord, we just praise you so much for how good a God you've been to redeem us by your precious blood. Help us that we might live for you as we ought to. We're not what we should be. But with your help, we can be, and we pray that you'd guide us. Bless our time together in your house to be an encouragement one to another. May we lift up praises to your name, and we'll thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. All right. Good singing. Now let's find hymn number 611, please. 611, He Hideth My Soul in the Cleft of the Rock. 611, let's sing this good song. All four stanzas. We'll make a few announcements. And turn it back over to the preacher. 611. Sing it out. Oh, wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord. Oh, wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He Uh-huh. 
song, Moses, great man of God, meekest man ever lived other than the Lord Jesus. God asked him, Moses, if you could have anything in the world, what, what could I give to you? He said, I want to see your glory. Isn't that a great thought? I want to see your glory. Out of all the things Moses ever saw, some wonderful things, all the things that God did in Egypt didn't impress Moses much. He said, if I could see one thing, let me see your glory. God put him in a rock and put his hand over him and let his Glory passed by, and Moses got to see that. Isn't that wonderful? We'll get to see it one day, eyeball to eyeball, face to face with Christ my Savior. All right? We've certainly moved into the month of March. Great message from the Word of God this morning on choices and making the right one, and we look forward to some more of that this month. Um, Psalm 119 throughout the evening services, and we'll continue with that. Um, school out tomorrow, and I hope you'll have a nice restful day and maybe... Um, cut down on some distractions that you may have in your life. Amen? All right, Brother Sellers. <clears throat> Pardon me. Thank you, Brother. Let's have the kids come down. Say your Bible verses if you would. Y'all come line up down front. Kieran, get down. Come on, you can do it. Well, what in the world? You know, I'm going to pick on you. You know that. You know more verses probably than half the people in the audience today. <laughs> Just stand up some. Come on, Big Todd. Good to see these young people down Amen. here. There we go. All right. We appreciate them very much. We got tall ones and short ones. Get us started, Madison. John 6, 48. I am the bread of life. Amen. Amen. Genesis 6, 8. But no found grace in the Lord. Amen. Yes, he did. Jesus wept. Yes, he did. Amen. First John 5, 21. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. 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 I am that bread of life. 
Amen. Amen. Revel <laughs> Revelation 22, 21, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. 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 John 1, 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. 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 John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. First Thessalonians 5, 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Perfect. Amen. Amen. Any adults got a Bible verse you'd like to say? Anybody at all want to get us started tonight? Anyone? Sharon? Amen. Anybody else? Miss Rosemary? Okay. There you go. Amen. Oh, well, excuse me. I'm sorry. I... God hath raised him from the dead. Oh, I, hey, I, you're making a great effort, and you're accomplishing a lot. And the, if you learn that whole Romans road, it will come in more handy than you realize. Anyone else? Anybody else got a Bible verse you want to share tonight? Anybody at all? PJ? Amen. Deborah? Amen. 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 Good. I'm glad to see the adults doing it so well also. Someone else? Leah? Amen. Anybody else? Dave? Amen. Nick? Yeah. Yes, sir. Amen, Brother Nick. Thank you. Someone else? Miss Chrissy. Amen. Well, that comes in handy a lot. Somebody else? Anyone else at all? Angie. Amen. Good. Anyone else? Brother, you got one you want to say? Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace that passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Uh, Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus. And this month, we're focusing on getting rid of your distractions. So to do that, it helps to focus on Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus. All right? We'll have some testimonies in a minute from some of the ladies, hopefully. So let's sing another song, Brother Earl, if we would. All right, 502, if you'd like to stand, please. We'll wave at one another. Like we really like each other. Amen, 502. And in my heart, there rings a melody. We'll sing the first verse. We'll wave. We'll have some special singing and turn it over to the preacher. 502, sing it out. I have a song that Jesus gave me. It was sent from a 
And now time for our special music. Before we sing, before we sing, many of you may know that my wife and I met as a result of our local church and we were in a youth choir together as teenagers many, many years ago. And I'm very grateful for that because, you know, you don't understand sometimes when you meet people how important they'll be in your life. And uh, I don't know where I would be. Uh, Y'all probably didn't be unvoted me out a long time ago if it wasn't for my wife. Well. And so I appreciate her. She's been a, <laughs> she's been a great help meet in so many ways. And uh, uh, if there's any good that's come about in our children's lives, it's a result of my wife. And I just thank the Lord for her so much. And uh, now that she's preaching other places, well. um, <clears throat> I thought we'd try to sing a song together. But uh, God brought us together. You never know when you cross people's paths, again, how important they can be in your life. But uh, the first time we ever sang a song, many, many years ago, the, when the kids were real little, uh, maybe, I'm not even sure, Matthew probably wasn't even born, we sang this song, and you're welcome to sing with us. It's 520 in your hymn book, The Longer I Serve Him, The Sweeter He Grows. <laughs>
Well, we ain't perfect, but we sing for him, and I hope you got a blessing from it. At least y'all laughed at the end, so that's worth it right there. All right, I'd like to ask Brother Earl, he's, he's got the microphone. He's going to bring the microphone to you, and so that way we can hear all of you. So if you'd like to, I'd like you ladies to tell us a little bit about the meeting uh, that you went to and what blessing you might have got from it, and this way we'll make sure that we hear you. And uh, you don't have to tell me. You can turn around and face everybody and tell them, or you can look this way if you're a little bit scared. So who wants to be the first one to give a word of testimony about the ladies' meeting? Who would be first? Now, if you don't, okay, thank you. Good, I didn't want to volunteer and told you there all of a sudden. Okay, if, would, you, would you stand, please? And Thank you very much. You've been here long enough to know that. I bought my book, so I went to the Oh, book. okay. They taught us things or brought back to our memory. Uh, first one I went to was the love boat. Well, wow. uh, that was very interesting. And then I went to clear the deck. That lo young lady was awesome that <laughs> taught that. Uh, and then I went to uh, I I captain. Uh, I don't know if I'll ever say I I captain, but <laughs> I learned to be the first mate. Oh, okay. Okay, and I also went to the Bermuda Triangle. That was interesting. And then also, it was, all this was on hold uh, the anchor we hold, or hold the anchor. It was awesome. Every year it just gets better and better. And I really enjoyed this year a whole lot. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Dameron. Thank you. I'm glad you made it back from the Bermuda Triangle. A lot of people go there and don't ever come back. Thank you for that testimony. Who's next? You ladies? Stacy? Miss Barber, one of those back there, Brother Earl. Um, well, this was actually my, the first year that I could make both days. So I have to have a husband that works so much, so I'm not always able to make it on Friday nights. But we worked it out where I could go um, for both days, and I'm so glad that it worked out, even though it was kind of last minute. And um, I was able to ride with Angie, and that's um, one of the things that I truly enjoy about going. Um, we lead such busy lives, and it's so important that as a group of ladies, we love each other so much, and we, we enjoy seeing each other at church, but to get away with each other, to fellowship and grow in Christ with each workshop, um, that in and of itself makes the difference. Um, you learn so much personally in the workshops, but to sit along um, ladies that you love so much um, and do it together, it, it's just a blessing. <clears throat> I went to four workshops as well. Friday night, um, I went to how to study your Bible, different ways that you could study, tips that you could uh, study your Bible. Um, we get so caught in make, making sure we read and it's almost a, a checklist, you know, something just to make sure you do, you know. And it makes a difference when you actually, even if it's just a passage of scripture, um, you actually sit and study it. And uh, so it was very helpful. Uh, the next day on uh, Saturday, I started out with uh, Miss Sellers' is Clear the Deck. And um, I, I'm not saying this just because she's my pastor's wife but she did such a tremendous job, and I was incredibly proud of her. I know she was nervous, and um, I was proud to sit on that front row and watch my pastor's wife uh, deliver. Um, I know she's not preaching, but it was a message. It was a, a message for a whole room full of us ladies, um, <clears throat> and she was talking about time management and how it's so um, important, especially in today's society, when we have so many distractions, to make sure that even in an hour's time, we, we do things that um, are so important, and making sure that our priorities are in line, and um, she's saying four priorities, and I know there's other ladies that want to speak too, so I don't want to take every, <laughs> everything everybody else says, so. And then I um, also went to uh, I, I Captain about marriage and how um, God puts our husband there for a reason. And um, yes, it's important that they treat us um, the way God wants husbands to treat us, but it's, um, he can't be our captain unless we, he has a good first mate. And um, so I enjoyed that one. 
And then the last one I went to um, was Miss, with Miss Debbie Chancy, and I've known them for years. And um, her son and I traveled on the Alathians together, and she has been such a blessing to me for the almost 20 years I've known her. Um, I don't get to see her very often, so I knew, I really picked that workshop just because she was uh, the speaker, and um, it was a blessing to me. She was actually um, speaking on finding joy in your storm, and it was just me and Miss Barbara from our church that went into that one, and, um, you know, I, I can't say that I've, I've lost a close family member to death, but, you know, we, we experience storms. In, in different ways. Something that might be a storm to me uh, might not necessarily be a storm to somebody else. We experience different things in life, but it was such a blessing. You know, we, we focus on being happy, but um, it's, it's so much deeper than that. We want to find joy. And she was saying that every time joy is mentioned in the Bible, it's actually accompanied with mourning or affliction and um, it's so awesome to know that we serve a God that gives us that joy um, that we can still have a smile on our face and still experience storms. So um, that's not even about any of the, any of the min, uh, messages from the main speaker, and she was incredible too. But if you didn't make it this year, I urge you to try to make it next year. If anything, the workshops are great. But more than that, you get to experience two days, almost two days, with your, some of your church ladies that you don't get to spend time with. So it was such a blessing. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Stacy. Miss Barber? My word for the year is obedience. And um, even though I'm a preacher's kid, I haven't always done what I should. And so... I, my main goal this year is to be obedient to God and study his word. And I went to the one with Stacy about how to study your Bible because I don't really have a set way I do it. And the Lord convicted me that I need to have a set way to do it, not just do it haphazardly. This is his precious word. And um, I went to the joy one too. Um, many of you may not know, my husband passed away four years ago from pancreatic cancer. And... I truly have found joy in the difficulties. God bless you, Miss Barber. Amen. Someone else? Angie? Oh, there. All right. Um, this is my third year going and my second year getting to stay for both nights. And like Stacy said, it's, it's a breath of fresh air to be able to step away from the busyness of your day-to-day -day life and just be able to spend almost 20 hours with women you love and just getting to learn more about God. And we don't get to do that very often. You know, we're, we might, I get to pray in my car or pray first thing in the morning when nobody else is awake and it's four o'clock in the morning. But, you know, you, you, you don't get much time throughout the day to just really get a chance to reverence God, and those 20 hours, I know, for me, are what keeps my cup full sometimes during the whole year, Amen. and, um, you know, the, the workshops are wonderful. They're always such a huge help to me, and I always walk away with one little tiny nugget, and um, sometimes it's not even, like, the main point of that whole uh, workshop that we attended, um, like uh, Ms. Brown was saying, I went to the Bermuda Triangle one as well, and that one was about how not to lose self-control, and I'm sure nobody would ever think I could lose my self-control, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, one of the, the points, and it wasn't even, well, it wasn't even a point that the lady was, uh, uh, that she was even talking about, and I love Miss Trish McCoy, like, anytime she does a, a class, I want to, I want to be in there, because she's, hilarious but she's also got like so much good stuff coming and um one of the things she said and it wasn't like i said her her point was about not losing self-control is about learning how to um not let things overtake you but uh she was reading first peter 4 uh 15 
But let not you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. And she was like, how are gossips in the same verse as murderers and thieves and evildoers? Gossips are. And I'm not a huge gossip or anything. Like, I, I try to, you know, be a, a confidant to others, but it just kind of hit me in the heart that, you know, sometimes I can listen to gossip and kind of enjoy it sometimes because it's not there me. There you go. <laughs> but, um, but it was just, it was something to sit there and think about and that, you know, sometimes we get carried away in other things that are not important and yeah. it's still sin that, you know, trying to trying to fix people who don't want to be fixed or, you know, sometimes we, we, we don't set their, our priorities right and we try to fix other people and uh, I don't know, I just, that one little tiny thing just like hit me. Amen. It's something that I just, I took away pretty big from it, but, you know, uh, the workshops were wonderful and if other women didn't get to go this year, I highly, highly encourage to get to go next year. Amen. It's such a wonderful time and get to spend great time with the ones that we love in this church. So, Amen. Thank you, Miss Angie. See another hand? Right there. I just wanted to say that um, if you let mom preach too often, nobody's going to want you up there. <laughs> All right, so um, she did. She did a great job. Um, this was my third or my fourth year. I'm not sure of going, but um, last year I went, and I'm just going to say this: the main speaker was not for me. But um, this year, the main speaker was for everyone. I do believe it. She was phenomenal, and um, she really didn't even like speak on any set thing um the first the first night she just gave her testimony about when she'd lost her son and how god had helped her through that and it, she did like i'm gonna cry <laughs> she was talking about being a bob uh, and how you pray so much for your children um and i'm that bob praying all the time for how god's gonna use them in the future and you know, she was saying, I prayed so many prayers for my firstborn, and I just knew God was going to do something great with his life. And then he dies at 17. And she said, for a split second, I got angry with God about, how dare you do this to me? How dare you take my child from me that I've prayed all these years for and I've raised the right way? And then she said this, she said, that her husband told her, you don't have the right to hold God accountable. Mm. Whatever he does is good. And whatever he does to his children or for his children is for their good. And then she said, she just started thinking like, but I wanted him to do so much for God. I wanted to shoot my arrow into the future and to be something great for God. And then, you know, it's like she said, he is being something great for God. He's <laughs> worshiping God around the throne. He's doing what we're going to do for eternity. And mm. it just hit me so hard. Like, I want my children to be so much more than I am, to do so much more than I do. But sometimes we can't see what the future is, and we want to see it so bad, and we worry and we fret. And um, like Stacy said, sometimes people go through storms, and I know I'm one of them, and we don't. We don't wear it on our sleeve. We don't wear it on our face. We don't tell nobody about it. We just face it. We just trust God. And he meets our need. Sometimes he puts us in storms we don't want to be in. And I'm just going to raise my hand and say, the past couple of years have been some storms. I don't want to be in them. I had not liked them. And I've wanted to quit. I've wanted to quit. I'm not... And it was just such a blessing to know that, you know, everybody goes through storms. Everybody at some point in their life wants to quit. But you don't quit. Amen. You don't give up. Because I have not just my children. I have a husband. I have two older sons. And they are watching what I do. Yeah. And they're watching if I give up. That's right. They're watching if I lose my joy. They're watching if I want to quit. 
They're watching how I respond to how people treat me. They're watching how I respond to when things don't go my way. And if I don't do what's right, I could ruin how far my errors go. They are the only thing I have to send to the world that I may not see. And it's great if I reach people for Christ. It's great if my parents reach people for Christ. But I don't want it to stop with me. I don't want it to stop with Jared. I don't want it to stop with you. I want our kids to do it. Amen. I want their kids to do it. And one of the things, it wasn't even like a big thing that she said. It was just a little thing, and it was just like the Holy Spirit just pierced my heart. And it was, don't quit. Don't you give up. Don't you say I've had enough. Because I want my kids to be with me in heaven, worshiping Jesus for eternity. And I want them, when I get to heaven, I don't, I don't want him to show up in heaven with nothing to lay at his feet. And I don't want him to show up in heaven with nothing to lay at his feet. And if I want the future of my children to be right, then I have to be right. All the time. Even when I don't like it, and even when it's hard, I still got to do what's right. Mm. And... I just want to say to you ladies, if we, we have all the meetings, on, we're going to get them on a thumb drive. And um, I would encourage you to listen to them. And you know what? What, what? what I got out of it, what Stacy got out of it, what Ms. Brown, Ms. Todd got out of it, may not be what you get out of it. But there was something there for everybody. And that's just how the Holy Spirit works. It may not even be the main point. It may not even be what somebody else got. But the Holy Spirit has the the power to prick your heart out of nowhere. And he has a way of, you know, bringing so many things to your mind. Like when you sit there and you say, God, speak to me. I want you to speak to me. And every time I come to church, I say that. Lord, I want you to speak to me today. And um, sometimes I leave and I think, hmm, that was good. You know, I got something from it. But sometimes it just hits you so hard you can't do anything but cry. Because he has pierced straight through to the very core of you. And I would just encourage you to stay in your Bible. Ask God every time you open it and every time you sit in church for him to speak to you and to pierce to the very core of your heart so that you can do something great for him. Amen. Amen. Okay, don't say anything about me preaching, okay? But this week, it, this weekend was great. First of all, there was, like you said this morning, over 400 people there. And I just took all that in. You know, with the COVID, everybody's been scared and nobody's coming. We were packed. And everybody was happy and talking. There was a lot of noise in that auditorium when she tried to quieten us down to get started. Um, everybody was so happy to be there. And I was just watching all that because I... It, it was a blessing to me because, you know, we're, we're still kind of just spread out, you know. But no one seemed to be worried about it this weekend, and I've been praying that no one gets sick this way from yeah. this weekend. But it was an awesome weekend. I've enjoyed every time. But I did enjoy this weekend with our main speaker, Miss um, Linda Wilkerson, and she's just so down to earth. Any one of us could have stopped her in the hall and talked to her or asked her a question, and she'd have taken the time for any one of us. And I think that's good. Mm -hmm. She didn't tell her story without tears. Um, and I can tell it's hard. I mean, she's been telling it for years now, you know, but it's still hard because that's her child. He was coming home from working at a teen camp that he had helped her at. She'd come home early on Thursday, and he was coming home on Friday when he had that accident. And he was already a soul winner and doing things for the Lord, just anything that he could do. 
and God took him. And it's like she said, he's done more with his testimony since his death than in his life. But that auditorium, there was some broken ladies in that auditorium. And especially when she said, be sure to tell those you love that you love them. Hmm. You know. And we know that, but sometimes we get so busy we forget to take the time to let the ones know that we truly love, that we love them. But I hope you'll go. It's always the first weekend of March. Um, I wouldn't care if, ever, if all my ladies went because it's, it's a time of um, revival for us, you could say. It's, it's a renewing. Uh, it refreshes our soul. We want to get back to doing what we really should be doing. And me teaching that class on time management, I had been teaching that to myself for weeks. Um, and I thought, well, okay, Lord, we've been really busy for the past three weeks before I had to teach that lesson. And then it was knocking into my routine, you know. But um, I appreciate my ladies coming and sitting there on that front row because I was so nervous. And um, we, we had in my room 85 chairs and I had 83. So it was packed. But... Um, God blessed, and I'm thankful for it. It worried me a little because they recorded it this year. They could have done that without telling me, and I would have been a whole lot better. <laughs> but I just want to encourage you all to go. And it's like everybody said, somebody took, we all took something different away from the same messages. And it's kind of like when you preach, it's like, you know, it, it, it touches us in different ways because of what, is how it's applied to our lives. So I just want to encourage you to go. It's a blast. Uh, it's a lot easier spending the night, too, than driving back and two. But uh, we do have one that hasn't spoken yet, and she's pretty quiet all the time. <laughs> but I'm so glad that Lori and Lindsay got to come. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Well, like she said, uh, <coughs> we went on Saturday. I couldn't make it on Friday, but... Um, this is my second year going. Last year it didn't work out, but I've, I've enjoyed every time I've got to go. And like she said, Lindsay went because they have workshops for teenagers and young adults, and she enjoyed it. She, and the fellowship's great. Even people you don't know, you kind of feel like you do know them because of just friendliness and smiles. And um, she said she was nervous, but I went to her workshop, and you, you couldn't tell. You did a great job, and I really enjoyed it. Um, everyone was saying how, how good she did. And um, I went to the I, I, I casting that she mentioned and and the other one. But it was, um, they were all good. I mean, you get, you get something out of anyone you go to. And I kind of was convicted more about having, like, like she mentioned, a schedule of reading your Bible and purposely reading and just trying to get out of his word what he has for you every day. And just kind of, you know, growing more. So, like I said, it was a blessing. I look forward to the next time we get to go. And it seems to be growing. So if you want to go, make sure you sign up right away. <laughs> Amen. Anyone else? Your teenage? Okay. Your teenage girls, welcome to say something too now.
Amen, Stacy. What else? What else? Can't get the teenager to say anything. Well, I think they had a great time. Thank you, Brother. Is that it? All right. Um, I will say this much. It sure seems like several have said something about busyness and distractions. It seems like we're on the right theme for this month, aren't we? And then, of course, to hear how there's a different hunger for God's Word and to get in it. Like should. Could y'all go back next Friday, too, and then the next one and the next one? Um, I'm, uh, can I say it this way? I'm very grateful for our ladies. Now, I know all of you couldn't go. Maybe you can go next year. But I'm, whether you win or not, I'm thankful and proud of you in that sense. But I, I sure do appreciate those of you that win, especially uh, supporting my wife uh, in, in her. It means a lot when you go. And then to have friendly faces on the front there that are ready to, if they don't say amen out loud, at least you can see it on their face, that they're, they're rooting for you uh, to do the best that you can. And I appreciate that so much. These are great testimonies. And maybe these testimonies in themselves are a message to us tonight as well. But I want you to take your Bibles. We're going to look quickly. I promise it won't be very long. Psalm 119, beginning in verse 33. I said to you earlier, I'm not sure how long we shall go through Psalm 119, but with the Lord's help, we're going to go until I feel like He's through with us. So, Also this, I understand Brother Tom and Miss Joan are probably heading back this week. I just want to say how much we always enjoy y'all coming. You're always a blessing. You just jump right in there and help out. and It's just good to see you. Y'all feel like family, and I believe it would be the perfect will of God for y'all to move to South Georgia. It's just, just, I just thought I'd let you know that. I told my wife today that's about the only thing I, I want to say. I sure wish uh, the Lord would do that. But at least you come and visit us. And uh, thank you again for your family. Uh, because through what you've done raising Kim, and then she's the one I know keeps Oliver straight. There's no doubt about that. And we're looking forward to him being with us in April. But thank you all again for the blessing that you are uh, to, I know your family and to Mom Rosemary, but you are to our church every time you come. Not everybody that visits our church would I say, man, I wish they was a member here. But them right there, I sure wish they were. So thank you all. Psalm 119, if you found it, say amen. amen. I'm going to read verse 33. Down through verse number 40. It starts out, now that word is written as H-E, but it's pronounced uh, hey, as like you would say H-E-Y. So hey, teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies, and not to covetousness. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in thy way. Establish thy word unto thy servant, who is devoted to thy fear. Turn away my reproach, which I fear, for thy judgments are good. Behold, I have longed after thy precepts, quicken me in thy righteousness. And I entitled the message tonight, Hey, <laughs> work on me. And so there's that little word, hey, and it's important uh, to see that. Now the word itself means like a window or a lattice. You understand a lattice work, like little strips of wood that are crossed uh, to make a certain grid pattern. And yet there are holes in that that lets uh, light through and lets you see through. What's a window? It's something that you can both let light in and you can also see through to see to the outside. And in essence, that's sort of what the psalmist here is describing and again I think David wrote it but he's saying this you know there's times I need to be able to see the Lord in situations and areas of life and there's times I need to let his word into my life the whole Psalm 119 is about the word of God whether it calls it word precepts statutes laws testimonies judgments all those are different words to describe the word of God but not the Word of God in the sense that we think of just the whole Bible that we set on the shelf. There's the Word. There's my Bible. There's my family Bible. But rather the Word that we incorporate in our life. The one we read. The one we study. The one we take time for. The one we go to. When I, man, I, like I said this morning, we got some big decisions to make. Well, I'm going to go to the Bible. I talked to somebody this week out of town, not here at our church. Somebody out of town, and I, they, were, they have a big decision to make. 
And uh, I gave them this advice. I said, something that has always helped me and hope it would help you. Number one, get a Bible verse from God's Word that you feel like is directing you in a certain way. Secondly, the inward working of the Holy Spirit. How do you feel in your heart where the Holy Spirit's working? You know, sort of a gut feeling that God gives you. And then thirdly, look at the circumstances and how do those things line up because more than likely, they'll point you just slightly in one direction or the other. But if you get those three things lined up, it's like lining up three lights as you're coming into the channel off the ocean so that you can get back to the dock. You line up those three lights, God's Word, inner conviction, and on top of it, circumstances, you'll make a good and wise decision. So hey, work on me, work in me, work for me work with me. All of that is in this psalm. But I want you to look at just a, just a couple of them with me. One of the ways I study my Bible is I try to read the verses. Usually it's a short passage. It's not always 176 verses. But in looking at these eight, remember, every eight verses, there's headed, they're headed up by a different letter of the Hebrew alphabet. We looked at Aleph. That was verses 1 through 8. Aleph means an ox. The one that leads out front with strength to pull the plow. Then we saw Beth right before verse number 9. That's house, like Bethel, the house of God. Then we saw right before verse 17, Gimel. That's the Hebrew word that is symbolized. It's a letter of their alphabet, but it's symbolized by a camel. So you had an ox, a door, a camel. We saw Daleth also. And now we're looking at hey or he, as you might look at in your Bible. Now here's what I do. When I look at this, I go a little bit further. So I notice in these verses, look at verse 20, uh, verse 33 rather, teach me. Verse 34, give me. Verse 35, make me. These are ver words I underline because that's what stands out to me. Now another part of the verse might stand out to you, but isn't that a good thought? To me, this is the first, if I give you three quick points tonight, the first one is the clarity of the Word of God. David is writing and he says, hey, Work on me, work in me, work for me, work with me. In what way? First of all, clarity. You know, I don't always know the right thing to do. I don't always know the right thing to say. Occasionally, I might say the right thing, but I have been known to put my foot in my mouth. You ever done that? Sometimes I don't always make the right decision, but I want to make the right one. But here's a, a very important part. I need clarity. Sometimes I pray this, Lord, make it plain to me and I say this to him, I, I'm, I'm not trying to run myself down to you, but I'll say things to the Lord like this, Lord, I'm stupid. I'm an idiot. I don't always see, you might have it right in front of me, and I'm overlooking it. Would you please show me what you want me to do and make it plain? You'd be surprised at times after that, I'll go to a preacher's meeting and somebody will get up and preach on the exact thing I need to make a decision on. Or somebody will walk in my office and say something, and it'll be like, there's my answer. Or I'll be reading my Bible in a place that has nothing to do with the decision i got to make. And a verse will jump off the page at me and say, that's what you need to do. God will speak to you and make it plain if you really mean it when you ask Him and if you intend to use it to help you. To help you go in the right direction. Teach me. Give me. Make me. What's He saying? I need clarity because I don't know everything. I'm humble enough to admit this. Without God guiding me, I might make the wrong decision. I need God to teach me so I can teach other people. There are parents in our nation who are trying to lecture, teach, drive, and push their kids in a direction that they've never learned to walk in themselves. And what happens is they raise children up who despise them later on and leave and walk away from the faith Sometimes that they even stand for because somehow they haven't put it into practice. It's a hard thing to do and none of us are perfect. But by the grace of God, we all need to say, Lord, teach me, make me, give me what I need so that I can live the right kind of life in front of my wife, my husband, my children, my parents, if you're a teenager. Help me as a young person to live like I should live. And that's the clarity that we need. And he makes this clear. He says, oh Lord, teach, teach me, O oh Lord, the way of thy statutes. He's admitting, I don't know it all. I don't know if you understand this or not, but not everybody has a teachable spirit. Any of y'all ever raise a child that was like strong-willed? Any of you consider that you might be a little strong 
will? Maybe they got it naturally. Maybe they got it genetically. Maybe they got it through maybe their rearing. But somewhere along the way, we all realize not everybody has a teachable spirit. It doesn't matter if you're in the classroom. I know from teaching all these years, there's some kids, they're easy to teach. Because they lend themselves over, give themselves to you and say, okay, I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to pay attention. I'm willing to try and glean from you. And I want your, I'm going to try this and I need some help. And those are the ones that are teachable. But some are too distracted by the things in life or they're caught up in the emotions of the moment or they're just kind of hard-headed. I know there's no hard-headed people in here, but they do exist. And the fact of the matter is, we need a teachable spirit. And that's what David had, the clarity of his word. Secondly, I would have you notice the course that the word of God lines out for him. He makes this kind of clear in the last part of verse number 35 where he says, This make me to go in the path of thy commandments. He makes it even clearer in verse number 36. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies and not to covetousness. Which way are you leaning? To incline. I think of that as leaning, an incline. Uh, I would think of a ramp out front, for instance, as an incline. It's something through which, not that we're necessarily always going up, sometimes we're going down it, but either way, we're at a certain angle. We're leaning a certain way. You know, there's a lot of Christians in the world that lean worldly. Their decisions are based on worldly ideas and concepts. It's about pride, it's about popularity, it's about money, it's about income, it's about what will make me shine. That's not the direction a Christian is supposed to lean in. We're supposed to lean in the direction of what will honor God, what will please Him, what will be best for my family. Do you see the difference? There's a big difference in the way you're leaning. I'm going to God's Word. I want Him to direct the course of my life. Not just for this day, but this week, this month, this year, my lifetime. However long God gives me to live, I want to be leaning in the right direction. So that, have you noticed this? Whatever direction you're leaning, if you trip, that's the direction you'll fall. And I'd rather be leaning toward God than even if I mess up, I'm at least falling at His feet and I'm ready to go again. He can pick me up. I don't want to be leaning away from Him. I don't want to pull it. I'm sure you can recall times when your children, maybe they were sort of small and you had to get on to them about something, and you reached to grab them, and they pulled away from you? Or maybe you had them by the arm, and they just struggling to pull away. They were leaning away from you. Wouldn't it have been better if they had just said, even when it was times of discipline, you know, we've seen parents get a kid up out of church sometime, and took that young and out, and you know that young is fixing to get a whooping. And you'd hear that young, and as they walk out, please pray for me. That'd be hilarious. Because you know what they're about to get. But leaning... Incline, this is the course he wants to go. I want to lean so toward God and His way and His work. I want the course of my life, the direction I choose to be that which honors God. And so he shows that course. He says more about it, even in verse number 30, 37. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity. That's another way of saying this. Sometimes I get my eyes on things that are nothing but vanity. What's vanity? Well, in the Bible, vanity is not just being vain like, don't I think I'm handsome or don't I think I'm smart. No, in the Bible, vanity is a word used to describe emptiness, hollowness, and there's just nothing to it. When Solomon, David's son, writes the book of Proverbs, he deals with this. When he writes Ecclesiastes, he deals with vanity, what he says in Ecclesiastes, vanity of vanities. There's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new. We're not like going to discover something in 2021 that, hey, we just found something brand new and didn't know existed. No, we're just going to reshape and recraft and remanufacture the same old sins that have been done since the Garden of Eden and we get ourselves caught up in them. I mean, y'all do realize murder still goes on today. Covetousness still goes on today. Idolatry still goes on today. Adultery still goes on today. You name the sin of the past and it's still going on in 2021. And there are people that fall... I'm using that word with quotations. They fall into murder. They fall into adultery. They fall into covetousness. Maybe it was this. They was already leaning that way to start with. Sort of like the old preachers used to say, one foot in the world and one foot in the church. Straddling, straddling that proverbial fence that is nothing but misery and discomfort. We need to make up our mind that we're going to go in the direction, the course of our life is going to be that which honors God. 
And then there's a third thing in this psalm, and that is conviction. He expresses that in verse number 38 through 40. Establish thy word. That's make it concrete unto thy servant who is devoted to thy fear. I think it was John Phillips. I've got the quote right here. John Phillips said this, There are those who read the Bible and forsake it. They deliberately turn their backs on it, putting it out of their minds. Then there are those who read it and forget it. They are not deliberate rebels or sworn enemies of the truth of God. They simply allow it to be crowded out of their lives because they have so many other interests. But then there are those who read the Word and fear it. They get a hold of it. They realize that it deals with eternal issues and that there is a heaven to be gained and a hell to be shunned. I think there's an awful lot said. Hey, work on me. Work in me. Work with me. Work for me. And that takes clarity. Show me plainly so I know what you want me to do. Guide me. Direct me. The path the course, and then establish. He goes on to say in verse number 39, turn away my reproach which I fear. I'm afraid, David's saying this, I'm afraid I'm going to mess up. I'm afraid I'm going to make a mistake. I'm afraid I'm worried sick that I'm going to do something that's sinful and I fear doing that will bring God's judgment in my life. David has that kind of a fear. And he's saying this, I don't want to be so caught up in that. I don't make, you've seen people, they're so caught up in the things, they're so scared to make a wrong decision, they don't make one at all. He says in verse number 40, Behold, I have longed for thy precepts. It's a deep conviction that he knows that God's word is the right direction to go and quicken me, that's give me life, quicken me, renew me, revive me, if you would, quicken me in thy righteousness. This is a conviction. Now I go back to the end of verse number 33 and I'll be done. He said this, after saying teach me, he said, and I shall keep it unto the end. Now, David is a man that's remembered to this day for a lot of things. If I said one of the greatest psalm writers, you'd know it was David. If I said the guy who slew Goliath, you'd know it was David. If I said he killed a lion and a bear before he faced Goliath, you'd know who I was talking about. If I said Saul tried to kill him and he had to dodge that javelin on three occasions, you'd probably know who I was talking about. He was best friends with Jonathan. We were doing a trivia quiz. Y'all get it right every time. David, 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 David. But David's also known for having ordered the murder of Uriah. And you'd have got that right in the trivia. He's also the one who committed adultery with Bathsheba. You'd get that right in trivia too. But you know what? When the whole thing is summed up and you get to the New Testament, do you know how the Lord remembers him? The man after my own heart. So it looks like that in the end, in the end, David ended up in the right place because he had clarity, chose the right course. He had a deep conviction. I want to not just start right, but end right. Every year, ever, excuse me, every four years, that's an Olympiad, four years. And when the Olympics take place, people that's trained for four years, some for a lifetime, go and compete. But you know, you can run in the 100-yard dash, you can run the 220, the 440, whatever it is. You can run in all those different levels, or their meters in their case. Or you can run in a big marathon. But if you start the race, that don't count. What counts is whether or not you finish it, and you finish it right. And David finished it right. I can think of others. Saul, he didn't finish it right. He didn't end up well. I can think of others. How about Lot? And how he messed up in an awful mess with his family in the end. Balaam is another. We can go all the way through the Bible. There's so many people in the Bible that ended wrong. But thank God for those who ended right. Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. Didn't end right. But Paul ended right. I fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge shall give to me in that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Wouldn't it be a great thing for us to have this deep conviction? I started, but I want to keep going, and I want to finish, and I want to finish well, so that one day my name is associated with doing the right thing even unto the end. Let's pray together. Father, thank you tonight for your word for good testimonies tonight that have just blessed my heart to hear how you worked in the lives of our ladies. And Lord, I know that translates into the, the spirit of our church. And as, as they grow and get closer to you, I pray that you'd help us as the men folk around here that we would as well. Thank you for the promises of your word. Help it, Lord. Show us. 
Give us clarity, the right course to take. Give us a deep conviction to follow and finish well for your honor and for your glory. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name we pray. Let's stand quietly to our feet. Miss Lori's going to play tonight. This altar is open if you'd like to come pray. Or even right there where you're at, you can make a commitment to the Lord, whatever it may be. If you're here and you're not saved, please come to Christ tonight. Miss Lori. Thank you, Miss Lori. You can look this way. Appreciate you being here tonight. We've got a good crowd tonight. Appreciate y'all coming back this evening. And again, thank you for the testimonies, the Bible verses, just everything. I thank the Lord bless. I'm glad I came to church. Any word before we dismiss? All hearts and minds clear? Yes, Miss Anne. That's good. That's good. Amen. Thank you, Miss Angie. I, I, I'm, I'm worried when Miss Deborah said something about the first mate that be she thought maybe they were going to say something about throwing Sydney overboard. I wasn't really sure about all that, but. <laughs> I'm sorry, brother. The Lord just opens the door, and I feel like I should share those things. Thank you, Miss Angie. That is, that is great that God put them where they are. That very good. Anyone else? Anybody else? Hearts and minds clear? Glad you saved. Say amen. amen. Good. Have a good week. God bless you.